Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about getting started in solar power, even as small as this. And I'm going to show you this neat little kit. You know, with all the stuff we're facing in the world, now is a really good time to be a little more self-sufficient. And the ability to generate some power, even if it doesn't power your whole house, is a huge asset when things get ugly. We've seen power get shut off during rolling blackouts and during fire seasons, so having the ability to make your own power certainly plays into prepping. And even if it's as small as this kit right here, and I'm going to show you how this kit works, and we're going to get into it in a second. But this is a really good kit to get started in solar or, or to use as some kind of charge maintainer. You can upgrade the panels and you can have some serious backup power. But at present size, it's perfect for phones, laptops, keeping things topped off, even a bug out scooter <laughs> charged up. So it's definitely a handy little thing. Uh, again, the panel is not huge, but it's a good start. So I'm gonna show you what comes in this kit and I'm gonna tell you what I like and what I don't like about it. Um, perhaps my biggest complaint, and we'll get into later, is that it's kind of missing a few wires. But we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to overcome that really, really easily um, when we hook this up to a battery. First off, I wanna let you know about the panel. Now this panel is a scratch resistant, foldable panel, not foldable, but bendable somewhat. You know, it's flexible. And it's got its little uh, controllers on the back. You have two USB ports, a USB-C, and a 12-volt DC plug, and that will play into what we're gonna do with this later. And as you can tell, it's a very flexible, thin panel, 12 watts, short circuit current is two amps, I'm sorry, three amps, open voltage is five volts. The panel dimensions are 11 by 11 by 0 0.08 inches thick. And it comes with this Redditry, 50 amp hour charge controller. Now, yeah, the charge controller is a little overkill for that panel, but like I said, if you have a bigger panel, if you want to daisy chain more panels to this, you will need a 50 amp controller, but not for that little guy. But it's a nice little charge controller, and I like having extras anyway. I like keeping backup. So this has a fairly high conversion rate, which is actually kind of cool on a panel like that. You don't expect that to be, you know, to have that kind of ability to do that. And uh, the back of it, let me show you the back again. First off, I want to show you the adapters. Now, Anything you have, this will charge. Look at all those adapters. So pretty much anything you got, this will charge it up, okay? And that will plug directly into one of those USB ports in the back here. So if you're looking to charge up your phone or keep stuff topped off, again, like I tell people, this can be put into a window and you can charge up your gear with it and that can be done anywhere. You don't need a huge backyard to do it. This can also maintain a 12 volt deep cycle battery. Will it charge it up from dead? Well, it might take a year, but it'll definitely charge it up somewhat and it'll always keep it topped off. So if you want to use this, you would just plug this in like that, find your correct adapter and go from there. Um, it does come with window plugs here. So if you want to plug those in, they just kind of snap in there and you can snap it to your window. You can suction cup it to your window. You get four of those. You get a car charger. Now what this, I believe, their point of this, is to plug this in and then plug this into your cigarette lighter of your vehicle and you'll be able to charge your vehicle's battery or keep it maintained. This is excellent as a motorcycle type maintainer. Um, but if you don't have that plug, you also have these here, which have their little alligator clips on the end. Same thing, you're gonna plug it in the bottom there and you're gonna connect that, connect that to your battery, your positive and negative terminals. But for our uses today, what we're gonna do is hook this up so that it actually will charge a, or maintain a deep cycle battery, and we're gonna use the charge control. Now, when I was saying my one complaint, I had wished they'd given me something that came off the 12 volt plug on the panel and went into the charge control. They didn't. So, what I'm gonna do, being that I'll never use this in a car, is I'm gonna cannibalize this clip here and we're going to turn this into a positive and negative terminal. And I'll show you how to determine which is positive and negative when we take it apart. But the first thing I'm going to do is unscrew that in there. I'm going to take it apart and I'll show you what's inside of it. All right, so here we go. We've got it all torn apart. You have your fuse, your spring that holds the fuse in. You have your screw that holds the case together. And you have your two wires. Now, I assume some people are going to go, well, how do I know which is which? They're both black. We're going to solve that problem with a multimeter which I have over here. And we're gonna put the panel in light, and actually that panel does react to the studio lights in here, so that's good. And we're gonna see which one is positive and which one is negative. And by doing that, we can find out how to connect it to our battery wires or how to connect it to our charge controller. 
which is what this is going to do. This is going to run directly into the charge controller, and then from there, out of the charge controller, it's going to run off these two terminals into our battery. And that's how we're going to do it. So being that I'm never going to use this thing again, I don't mind taking it apart and kind of cannibalizing it a bit and stripping off the wires. And you'll see there's a diode there with the LED and uh, showing you how easy it is to set this up. So let me get those wires off there and uh, strip them. And then I'll show you how you can determine which is positive and negative. All right, so we've got them all separated there, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to throw out all this stuff because, again, if I decide, oh, this was a really horrible idea, I want a 12-volt uh, cigarette lighter plug on it again, I can always go to an auto parts store like Napa or wherever, and they sell them there, and you can adapt it and reconnect it again. So let me get rid of all this stuff. We're going to connect this to the panel in the sunlight, and we're going to find out which one is positive and which one is negative. Now, I suspect the white kind of, it's almost like uh, dashes on it. I suspect that's my positive wire. I don't know if you can see that on there. But we'll find out in a second. Alright, so I have it sitting here. I can see the red light is on there. It is picking up just ambient light from the studio. It's not going to be a ton of volts when I do this, by the way. So you have to understand that. So now what we're going to do is connect one wire here and one wire here and see what our thing says. So that's saying 4.3... Whoops, I dropped it up there. 4.37 volts. Okay? That may be a 5-volt five, five panel. We'll see. Now, if I were to connect it backwards, I want to show you what it looks like backwards. It won't do any damage to it. It'll just show a negative number. See how that's negative 4.37? So this way we know that that is our negative terminal there. Now, let's take a look and see. Yeah, see, the red, the, I'm sorry, the, uh, the white dashes on that one is your, um, is your positive terminal. I thought that's what I thought. So there you go. So now we know this is the positive terminal. Those white dashes are positive. So what I'm going to do now is connect this to the charge controller and we are going to eventually put this in the sun and see how it works. I don't want to just do this inside because you'll never get a good reading off it. And uh, we'll connect it to the charge controller and then again, my other complaint, not another set of wires, we're going to run a set of wires off here to an old, um, I have a deep cycle battery that I was about to take to Walmart to recycle. So we are going to connect it to that and uh, watch it charge it up. So let me give, give me a minute here and I'll pull everything apart and show you what comes next. Now, just a word on safety. I'm setting this up today to demo this. If you're going to make a connection to a battery, I would suggest you fuse it on the positive terminal. Um, what I'm doing here is really just for demo purposes. Um, I do have these all twisted down. They are a little bit long for the, uh, for the uh, entry there, so I want to find my see my white little lines on that? That's my positive connection. Okay. So, there's my positive connection on this, on the charge controller, where the panel goes. And as you can see, there's a little panel there. So this is really, really simple to understand. That is a little long. So I think what I'm going to do is cut it down and make it so that I can put that in there. So let me cut that down and make it... Nice. All right, so it's completely wired, and that really is how simple it is to hook up a charge controller. Um, you've got your panels going in here and here, and it is labeled. There's a battery label on here. You've got your plus and minus going in here and your ends that are going to go to your battery. Now again, on a safety aspect, you want to fuse this going to the battery so if something happens it won't blow it up. I'm not dealing with a ton of current here and I don't have an extra fuse, otherwise I'd do it just for, for, the, for the video. But this is really just a demo. So we're going to take this setup outside, put it with that battery, and we're going to see how well it charges up the battery. We're going to see how the charge control works. Alright, so I have the panel up kind of on a rock at an angle and the sun is coming up this way, so it's right in the sun. There's the charge control, there's the battery, and again, those connections leave very much to be desired. You really want to put proper ring connectors on there. <laughs> this is just for demo. I'm going to show you. Now, when I put this battery on, it was 12.6. It is now 12.7. You see that little solar panel icon there with the arrow? That's meaning that it's going into there. Now, if you wanted to put a load on this, say a small light bulb, 12 volt, you would connect it there and there. You've got your ports here for USB so you could charge things. And again, don't forget, that panel over there, just alone, will charge all your stuff up. So you have your menus you can walk through here. I'm not going to get into that for the moment. I just wanted to show you how it works. So it's already taken up from 12.6 to 12.7, and I hope the camera, that's visible in the camera, it is. So that's uh, pretty impressive for such a tiny little panel. We're going to leave it out here for a few minutes while I clean up my mess. And before I bring it back on the table, I'll show you how far it's gotten from the 12.7 uh, further up. So check that out. 
12.8. It's putting it up there pretty good. So you see, even with a tiny little solar panel, you can maintain a battery and always have it ready to go. Now, what's the purpose of a charge control? For those of you who are new to solar and don't know, the purpose of this is to shut off the power when the solar panel is bringing in too much for the battery. So what this will do is when this reaches a predetermined uh, setting, and it's usually 14.2 uh, or 14.1, even 14.0 depending, and that can be adjusted with this when you get into the, I'll show you the instruction manual, um, it will shut off the panel. And it will not allow the panel to charge the battery anymore because you don't want to cook your battery. You don't want to overcharge it. It also will prevent discharging at night from the panel because the panel will discharge a little bit off at night. So that's what it does. It protects your battery. And it allows you with the newer ones to run some USB stuff, maybe a little bit of a light load kind of a thing going on there. So it is kind of handy for that. So you see within, I mean, maybe it took me like all well, of two minutes to clean off my table. It's already gone another 0.8, uh, 0.1 volt. So definitely can get it done with a small panel. And hanging that in a window, in a uh, sun-facing window, you'd be doing a good job with it just like it's doing here. So let's get it back up on the table. I'll give you a little bit of information, information on where to pick up this kit and uh, how much it goes for. All right, so there you go. It's really not all that mysterious. You can generate solar power pretty much anywhere you are. And like I said, this one even comes with the suction cup, so you could put it in a window and uh, let it have a sun-facing window that faces the sun for most of the day. And uh, even not in direct sunlight, this will still bring in some power. Now, you'll notice here that uh, there is no more solar panel icon on there and a little arrow pointing over to the battery. That's because it's not bright enough in here. Whoops. I'll show you the controller. See, there's no solar panel icon and there's no arrow. That means that you're not getting any power in there and it has dropped to 12.7. Actually, this battery is probably good and I probably won't return it now. I'll save it for its backup. But uh, I thought it was a little bit lower than that. It's actually doing pretty well holding at 12.7. That's fine for a deep cycle battery. So, all in all, I'm pleased with the kit. Seems to work pretty well. And um, I really got this to just show you how to do a basic solar circuit. Everybody thinks it's so mysterious so expensive. This whole kit was 38 bucks, you know? I mean, yeah, it doesn't come with the wires. I would have liked to have come with the wires, and I would have liked to have come with an extra 5.5 millimeter plug that just runs directly into the charge controller, maybe with some kind of connectors that fit right in there. But it was simple enough to do. And everybody I know can go to a Walmart or a hardware store and buy red and black wire. So it's not really all that difficult to do. It's a very simple task. Um, and if you're just going to use this just for, you know, it's, it's recharging capabilities on a backpack or something, you got these guys right here. I mean, everything you could possibly think of. There's even a USB-C. There's the old iPhone connectors. There's all sorts of connectors on the end here. So if you're try looking to charge up your GPSs, whatever, um, this will do it. You just plug that into the USB port, and whatever you need, out it comes. And if you want to just directly connect it to a battery, you can do that. For a panel that small, I'm not overly worried about it overcharging the battery. There's a very small chance that it would, but that's not a huge panel. And again, it says it's a, it's a uh, let me see if I can find it up here. It says it is a 12-volt panel. I would say that's more like a 5-volt panel, because that's what I was pulling off it. So, I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of, you know, information you kind of have to know ahead of time before you start messing around with it. But it seems to work pretty well, and you see how easy it is to do a simple solar circuit that can keep you going no matter what. Um, you know, if you lived in an apartment and you didn't have a lot of room to stick this kind of stuff out and you had a balcony, you could just place that on the balcony, run this inside in the battery box. I always tell people if you're going to keep it inside, keep it in a battery box, keep flame away. This does generate a little bit of hydrogen gas when it's charging, uh, depending on the size of the panel. If you're going to do this with a 300 watt panel into this, yeah, you want to keep that somewhere where there's no flame whatsoever. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a fairly simple operation to do. You could even keep it in a battery box outside. They don't like heat, so you don't want to keep it somewhere where there's direct sun and heat beating on it all day. But uh, it definitely is an uh, easy way to do it. So that is the kit. You can find one down there below. Um, I have it right on that link down there. And it is an awesome little kit for newbies. And if your kids want to learn how to use solar power, you know, if you say, see, Daddy's setting up a backup system for the house, and they want to learn how to do it. This is a good little starter kit, and for 38 bucks, you really can't go wrong. So, I will leave a link down below where you can pick it up. There is no name on it, so I couldn't tell you. The only thing they did name is the Redditry charge controller, so I can't give you a name. I know the panel is made by Giant of the Sun, 
And uh, that's about it. So it's really a cool little system all in all. You do get some inf information and instructions. So, like I said, check the link down below. You'll be able to pick up this system there, 38 bucks. There are tons of other systems there if you're interested as well. So click the link and go look and see what's suggested if, that's, uh, if this isn't going to suit your needs. Don't forget to check out all our links down below. We have our Amazon affiliate store. Our freeze-dried wholesalers link. If you click that link, you get 15% off. And that chicken sale is still going on today. So you can get 25% off on select chicken items from them. Don't forget to check out our Buy Patriot Supply link. That's preparewithiridium.com. Preparewithiridium.com. That link will be down below. And now is a definitely a good time to stock up on some long-term storage food. And our Thrive Life food as well. We have our store down there. You can check it out as well. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching and hanging out with me today with the video. Stay safe and stay prepared.